Now let us talk about the second failure of this eye that is shear failure of eye. So first of all let us draw the diagram of eye. So as you can see here this is the eye and this thickness of eye is small b and this is the hole in this eye end whose inner diameter is small d and this outer diameter of this eye end is d o and as we have seen in the free body diagram so this eye is subjected to this type of tensile load p and because of this tensile load p this eye may fail in shear failure so in shear failure this portion of uh, some portion of this eye will get removed like the portion from this eye that is this portion so this portion of eye this portion of eye will get sheared off from this eye end and this much portion will get shear off from this eye end and which which is because of the shear failure in more a specific way we can say that this type of failure is a double shear failure because the failure occurs at these two planes so it is the example of double shear failure so let us draw the diagram of this eye after double shear failure now let us look at this uh, diagram so this is the portion of eye that has been sheared off from eye end sheared off means what this portion this much portion portion has got cut from this eye end and it has get removed from this eye end like this so in this portion this is the area subjected to shear stress so this is the area subjected to shear stress and this area is corresponds to this first plane okay so this area is corresponds to this first plane of failure and similarly we have another plane of failure that is second plane of failure and the area corresponds to the second plane of failure is exactly beyond behind this first area so this is the first area and the second area would be exactly behind this second that is behind the first area so that is this is the area which is behind this first area and this area would be the second area which is behind the first area so this is second area which is subjected to this shear stress now if you look at this dimensions so this height of this segment is again small b that is equal to the height of this i or thickness of this i which is small b now in order to find out this uh, two rectangular areas we must know the height and width of this rectangle height already we know it is small b now let us find out this width of this rectangular area so if you look at this diagram so the outer diameter of this i is do inner diameter is small d and we have to find out this width okay so this width would be this do minus small d upon 2 so we can get this width so this width we are interested in that is the thickness of this hollow cylinder portion so thickness of this hollow cylinder portion is nothing but do minus d upon 2 which is equal to the width of this rectangular area so do minus d upon 2 so the same width is applicable for the second area which is exactly behind this first area okay so let us write the equation for the shear stress so actually this uh, failure is considered as double shear failure so we can write here this is a double shear failure of I because failure takes place in these two plane that is this is the first plane and this is the second plane so now let us write the equation of shear stress so shear stress 
in i which is denoted by tau is given by equation so tau is equal to p upon a and let us find out these two rectangular areas so area of rectangle 1 and area of rectangle 2 so we have to add so p upon first of all write the area of rectangle rectangle 1 so height is b and width is d o minus d upon 2 so height is b and width is d o minus d upon 2 so this is the area of first rectangle plus the area of second rectangle which is exactly behind this first rectangle so it is the same area whose height is b that is height of this second rectangle which is exactly behind the first rectangle is height is its height is b and width is same that is this width and this width is same that is do minus d upon 2 so we can write b into do minus d upon 2 so this is the total area subjected to shear stress as this hatched portion shows the area subjected to shear stress and this is nothing but the total area area of this first rectangle which is subjected to shear stress and this equation represents the area of the second rectangle which is subjected to shear stress and which is behind the area number one so let us add this denominator so it becomes so this b into d0 minus d upon 2 plus b into d0 minus d upon 2 we get twice into b into d0 minus d upon 2 so here this 2 2 will get cancelled and finally we can get the equation of tau as p upon so this b into d0 minus d b into d0 minus d so this is the equation of shear stress shear stress equation for i okay so same equation we have got for tensile stress in i so rhs for tensile stress and shear stress for i is same that is p upon b into d0 minus d